Welcome back to Pickleball Journey. Today we are bringing you three key things to work on in your rec games. My name is Elisha. I'm Justin. Let's drink some pickles. <laughs> All right, so this is a key tip for the next time you're out playing a rec game. So what you're gonna do, uh, you're really gonna focus, this is specifically when you're hitting dinks, you're gonna focus on patience. It's not a drill, but in, in your rec game, mm -hmm. where you're, you're literally just counting the number of shots before you attack. Sure. So what you're doing is you're limiting yourself, even if you get easy balls, what you're doing is you're working on being patient Obviously, if it's a if it's a complete sitter, yep. put it away. Yep. But here you're working on, hey, can I outgrind? Can I can I be more patient than my opponent? You're focusing on not making mistakes. Sure. And to add on to what Justin's saying is pick pick a number that is uh, your skill level, right? So for Justin and I, we might pick. 10 dinks before we can speed up or something, or you might want to pick three dinks if that's what you can handle, or five yeah. dinks, something that challenges you, but it's not too far out there that's not achievable. So next time in your rec game, be like, okay, I'm gonna hit five dinks before I can speed it up or go for something, right? Yeah. And, and we're, this is just a, a practice in rec game. I'm not saying do this in competitive right. play because when you find an opportunity and you find a good shot that you can speed up on, it might not happen, it might happen within that or after that. Yeah. So make sure that you're more spontaneous in your competitive play, but it's something to do that you can really challenge yourself off in rec play or, mm -hmm. or just training in, in general. And, and what you'll find is that this will build confidence. So you'll get into playing more games, you'll get into more rallies and you'll say, hey, I know that I can out rally, I can out grind in this dink battle because you've done it. You've consciously worked at, hey, I'm hitting five dinks before I attack. I'm hitting 10 dinks before I attack. And yeah. I know my opponent can't do that. Yeah. So this is gonna build confidence in your game. So let's show something like that, right? So I'm gonna think, I'm gonna think out loud. I'm gonna be like one, two, three, four, and five. So now I'm looking for that opportunity to attack. Now, one of those shots, Justin popped up a little higher yeah. and I could have attacked on, but I decided not to because it's within my five and I'm just working on getting to five dings consistently yeah. and then looking for my opportunity. So it's something that, hey, in normal competitive play, maybe I would have been more aggressive on that one, but I'm, I'm working on something. I'm working on my dinks and not necessarily my aggressive play at that point. Yeah, love it. So the second mental tip is with the serve. When you enter your next rec game, um, if you focus something on maybe consistency, try to count how many misses, miss serves you have in the entire game, okay? And then what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be aiming for that middle of the box, trying to be consistent with our technique, good clean contact, and try to go an entire game without missing a single serve. Now, a different goal you could have is maybe uh, if you're really consistent with your serve, have some placement. So pick a spot in the box that maybe you don't hit too often that we wanna start hitting to and hit to that spot every time, every serve, working on it. Now, your opponents might catch on, they might start going to it, but keep working that because you want have a different mentality in actual rec gameplay than you would in drilling or just practicing your serve. So really work on hitting that shot to that certain spot so we can be able to move the ball around the box wherever we want. All right, before we get into this last tip, please be sure to smash that like button. It really does help us out. Uh, so this last mental tip is gonna be focusing on baiting your opponent into hitting a certain shot. Mm -hmm. So what we mean by this, uh, if you're playing doubles, uh, you're in these dink battles, and, uh, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to get your opponent to hit to a spot. Yep. So what I might do in that case is I might, if the ball's going to my opponent, I might shift this way, act like this is where I'm gonna be hanging out. Yep. But in reality, I'm ready to pounce on the ball right here. Yep. So again, I'm baiting my opponent to hit to this spot. Mm -hmm. But in reality, I'm sitting there waiting for that the shot. The beautiful part about this is the pickleball moves so slow. And we got a small court. So a bait is not gonna be too detrimental if you get screwed because you're right. able to change back directions pretty quickly. Yeah. One benefit to this is not just faking them out, but also distracting your opponent from their focus, mm -hmm. right? So they might, they might 
mishit the dink because you're moving around on the other side. Mm -hmm. I notice this especially yeah. when I play a higher level players, 5-0s. When they're on the other side and they have a great stance, they're moving around, they're getting ready for the ball, I am a lot more nervous and I get a lot more tighter and I start missing more dinks. I, I feel that a lot more than if I'm playing 4-0s or even lower. They kind of just stand there. So if you're if you're at that lower level, use those tips that you see and that intensity from yeah. those higher level players to create that pressure on them to miss those dinks and get tight. Yeah, that's great. All right, real quick, we love these engaged pals. We've got a 20% discount code in the description. Yep. These pals are gonna bring your game to the next level and you're gonna win every match. Guaranteed. <laughs>